This video is about understanding the degrees of freedom. Now, the degrees of freedom are the minimum number of independent coordinates required to specify the position of a dynamical system. For example, if you have a particle moving in three dimension space, then you will need x, y, z. That means a total of three coordinates to specify its position. That means the degrees of freedom of this particle are 3. So now let's take a look at the formula for degrees of freedom. This is the formula for degree of freedom. So now let's understand this formula. This 3 represents the dimensions of the space. This n is the number of particles minus this k is called constraints like the restrictions on the particle. For example, a particle moving in three dimensional space and I say that it cannot move in y axis and z axis. It can only move in x axis. So, its degree of freedom will be 3, number of particles are 1, minus we have two restrictions. So, 1 degree of freedom that is only in x axis. So, this is how we find degrees of freedom from this formula. So, now let us find degree of freedom for different kind of systems to understand this concept better. So, now a particle moving in the circumference of circle. Now, to find degrees of freedom for different systems, you need to take right kind of coordinate systems or you will increase the number of coordinates increasing the degree of freedom. And degrees of freedom are the minimum number of coordinates. So, you have to take the right kind of coordinate system for that. So, a particle moving in the circumference of circle. Here, we will take the plane polar coordinate which have the coordinates of r and theta which are like coordinates on a circle. Now, r in here is fixed because it's moving on the circumference of circle. So, there is only one coordinate that is theta. So, degree of freedom is 1. Now, two particles moving freely in space. So, 3 and space is 3 dimensional into particles are 2 minus no constraint that is 6 degrees of freedom. Now, 5 particles moving freely in a plane. Now, five particles are moving in a plane that is two dimensional space so two into five minus zero that is 10 degrees of freedom now two particles connected by a road moving freely in a plane now there are two particles connected by a road so first thing it's plane so two dimensional space into two particles minus there is one constraint that is they are connected by a road that means the road is rigid so the distance between them is fixed that means there is one constraint so 4 minus 1 is 3 3 degrees of freedom now a bob of a simple pendulum this is really similar to the particle moving on the circumference of a circle so its degree of freedom is 1 that is we only need theta to specify its position now a dumbbell moving in space now a dumbbell is moving in space. So there are two particles and three dimensional space minus there is one restriction that is five degrees of freedom. Now if you understood this topic really well then answer this question in the comments down below. You have to find the degrees of freedom of a rigid body moving freely in three dimensional space. If you have understood this topic really well then you can find this very easily. So write down in the comments box below what are the degrees of freedom of a rigid body moving freely in space. And thanks for watching this video. If you like this video subscribe this channel help us reach our 50,000 subscriber milestone and always remember that math is everything.